Hi, and welcome back to PA Harness Week with Steve and Heather. As you can see, we match this week, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we were like totally on the phone last night. We're like, what are you wearing? I what are know. you wearing? What, to wear? what are you going to wear, you know? Okay, here at Harris Chester on Sunday was race nine. It was for non-winners of $22,500 in the last five starts. And Martha Maxine, the interesting steed, was the 8-5 to five chalk with Andy Miller driving for Julie. Estero Bay was 2-1 to one with Georgie Knapp for Lou Pena. And straight shooting with Yannick Jingra for Ron Burke was the public's 4-1 to one third choice. And with the call, here's James. Straight shooting. We'll have to do battle with Martha Maxine. Their heads apart with inside three eighths to go. And Astero Bay tracks comfortably from the pocket. This trio is opened up by two from Albert Chief, stalled wide of next flight. Wynn Smith Art, while in the clear, has seven lengths to make up, and he has pointed three wide. Get it now, has trailed throughout. Three quarters in 121 and three. And Martha Maxine took over three quarters of a length. Straight shooting is forced to fight back. Estero Bay fans three wide. Purple and gold blinkers at the top of the stretch. And it's still Martha Maxine with a narrow lead. Martha Maxine set sail for the lead at the half, then managed to live just nipping Estero Bay by this much of the wire in 115.3. Get it now with Eric Adell. Got third at 18 to 1. And now we go to our roving correspondent, Jen Sherlock, who's going to tell you the amazingly curious story of a horse that was once a she but is now a he. Is this a transcend transgendered horse by us? The horse is actually kind of always a he, but then they thought she was a she or thought he was a she. But maybe, didn't this horse maybe Jen should explain it a little better. Yeah, maybe you're yeah. right. <laughs> Martha Maxine used to be a she. Now she's considered a he? What's up with that? Her trainer didn't think that could be true. A couple years ago here at Chester, uh, the horse Martha Maxine uh, got a positive test report for testosterone. Uh, I contacted the trainer, uh, Irv Miller, and informed him of the test, and he said uh, that the horse hadn't received any testosterone, and the only possible uh, reason would be uh, mistakenly treated by a veterinarian. But it was more than just a mistake. Martha, or maybe Marty, was further tested, and it was concluded by the USTA that it was a genetic male. And upon internal exam of the horse, uh, they found a mass that was apparently uh, a partial testicle that, that could have been the reason that the horse tested positive for testosterone. The, the, the horse looked like a mare on the outside, a female horse. Uh, and so nobody, nobody even realized anything was up until we did the test, and then the testosterone showed. So upon further testing, they determined that the horse was more genetically male than female. Now that testing and technology has gotten better and better, this condition is not as rare as once previously thought. At first they said, this is tremendously rare. And then I was thinking uh, and, and talked to the lab guys, maybe it's not quite as rare as we think, because nobody had ever tested for steroids before. 27-time winner, Martha Maxine takes the ninth and 150 and three, that equals a seasonal mark. It was determined that since it was more genetically male, that it has to race against male horses and is no longer eligible to race uh, against females. I'm Jennifer Sherlock, PA Harness Week. Thanks, Jen. Well, the Martha Maxine mystery is now cleared up. I have a firm understanding of exactly what the story is now, really. Really? No, what about you? I got it. You got You understand that? Yeah, one? totally. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that note, now back after a two-week hiatus where you were left high and dry all alone to smoke out your own one to nine picks, here's the coach, E.B. Helm. Good morning, and welcome back to the Coach's Corner. We've been off a few weeks, so the bankroll's been sitting at $901. I want to give a coach's shout-out to regular viewers with birthdays this week. Joe Weldon, Kenny Clawson, Jason Christmas, and Matt Conaway. Happy birthday and keep watching, guys. Also, a get well wishes to a regular viewer, Charles Weatherby, over in the Woodbury, New Jersey area. Charles, our winners today are for you, buddy. Get well. Uh, this week, there's not a lot of big money races. There's a little bit of lull in the big money race action. So we're going to head out to Indiana Downs for the Indiana Sire Stakes, where they're running the two-year-olds. First up, we're going to go to race three. It's two-year-old fillies, and the number three, ABC Easter. Love this horse. We're going to go $20 to win and $20 to place on number three, ABC Easter. We're going to skip to the sixth race where they're showing 
two-year-old Colts and Geldings trot. And we're going to go with the number three, Dream Kid. Also $20 to win and $20 to place. And then we're going to go to the number seven race. It's not the Sire Stakes. It's their Open. And it's a horse we've given you before. Number five, I am Bonacera. Love this horse. He's stepping up to run with some older horses this time, but I still like him a lot. $60 to win and $20 to place on the number five, I am Bonacera. Thanks, E.B. Four months ago, Aaron Merriman was at the top of the sport. He had the most wins for any driver in the entire country. And then he got in a racing accident. He broke both of his wrists and his left elbow. Now, it was predicted that it would take at least six months for him to get back in the sulky. Guess what? Aaron's back already. He's been racing at Northfield Park in Ohio and in just his second night back on the track, he had three wins out of nine starts. Congratulations, Aaron, on a speedy recovery, and we'll be watching you. Seven-year-old pacing stallion and winner of 2.8 million shark gesture. Yeah, you may have heard of him. Well, he is officially retired. Couple starts now, he's made some breaks, um, you know, in some big races. They weren't really sure what was going on. Well, they figured out that the culprit is a problem with one of his ligaments. He does have some babies that are at auction right now. They're yearlings, there's 40 some. He was kind of a part time daddy back when he was four years old. Kind of like Michael Jordan coming in and out of retirement. Well, this is official now. Shark Jester is now a full time daddy. He'll start his new breeding life in 2011. We will be back in just a little bit because we're heading down to the Red Mile in Kentucky for some incredible racing. We'll be right back. And Wishing Stone is sprinting up and after Muscle Massive. It's your big night out and you deserve a little more. That's why you'll love the Downs off-track wagering. It's more than a sports bar. It's extra fun because you can watch, wager, and win on the hottest horse racing action from Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs and across the country. Downs off-track wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg, Hazleton. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check, please. Welcome to good old Sunday. 